Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, but you're going to enjoy this even more, I promise you. We have now Mr. Kenny Myers, master makeup artist. Kenny, thank you so much for being thank here Thank you for having today. me. It's a pleasure. You know, we've actually never sat and talked before. Never. I don't think. No, but we've had and some pleasant conversations at the trade yes, show. Yes, we have. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the PPI people mm -hmm. uh, for whom you are representing Scott today, Eric. yeah, those exactly, uh, have put on these fantastic trade shows. Mm -hmm. And you are, have been at every one of the trade shows. So far, every one. Yeah, at re, and doing remarkable makeup Thank you. each time. It's just amazing how many makeup artists are there mm -hmm. representing PPI. Mm -hmm. Again, a feather in their cap for being such high quality, uh, a high quality company. Now, let me let me ask you this. Uh, Scott has mentioned that you have been, from what he has said, a, an absolute major influence in the development of PPI in the uh, uh, in the motion picture and television makeup world. Uh, it's been an an interesting uh, uh, collaboration, and I often refer to it. Um, as lightning in a bottle. It doesn't happen that often in life that, that, the, that the gods line up and shine on, on anybody. But uh, it has been um, a lucrative and pleasant and family-oriented collaboration from the very beginning. Yes. I first, I first met Scott and Eric through uh, Richard Snow. Yes. Uh, a dear friend who's no longer with us. We were business partners in uh, Green Marble Sealer yes. and the Green Marble Products. Now, this was before your association with, with PPI? Yes. In fact, we were working on one of the alienation made-for-TV movies. I can't remember which one. And he told me he had, he had met some new guys. And I said, that's nice. <laughs> and he said, and there's a product here I'd like you to try. I said, okay. We were double-teaming, actually, on the, the, the uh, Eric, the lead, uh, uh, what we called Potato Head, or Aliens from yes. Alien Nation. Yes, yes. Lovely yes. man. And, can, um, I, can, I sure. inter just, can I Please. interrupt you just for a second? Please. They hate it when I interrupt people, but I've got to say this. Uh, you know, I'm looking down your resume right here, and I mean, literally, it just goes on and on and on and on. I, I mean, how the Grinch called, stole Christmas. Obviously, I know that, you know, these are headed by other, other right. artists, but you've worked on, you know, X-Men. Um, you've got, uh, you've got uh, Austin Powers, My Favorite Martian. Uh, Dante's Peak, Alien Nation, which was an, a monument. I mean, talk about Planet of the Apes. Alien Nation was to television what Planet of the Apes was to film. It was. I mean, it was an, just an amazing accomplishment. It, it was a wonderful piece of work. Yeah, and and uh, goes on and on. Our Star Trek, you, uh, Back to the Pu Future Part Three, Back to the Future Part Two, Star Trek Five, More Alien Nation, Return of the Living Dead. Uh, just on, 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 and your career started. You even had, even Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. Your career started back in when was it? the early eighties, right? Early eighties. Actually, I actually rolled into Hollywood in the late seventies. Yes. Uh, thanks to a, a, a high school, actually ju a junior high school friend named Chris Wallace, who won an Academy Award for yes. his uh, work on um, The Fly. Yes. And, Remarkable. Well, he and I had known each other Great since work. seventh grade. Our fathers worked together. So we spent many a summer uh, getting into tremendous chemical problems with caulking and various other substances you're not supposed to put on your face. <laughs> but we were brave, Early silicone. brave and stupid. Yes. We would do anything. Yes. Um, uh, and that's kind of how we both got started, was making masks in yes. our bathrooms and gluing them on each other right. and going... Right. I can't get this off. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> uh, so, so I go, I go, I go back a ways, and and uh, the the very fortunate resume that I've been uh, happy enough to be a part of just comes from being here long enough. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and hanging out and uh, being lucky enough to work with some excellent people. Right, right. You know, Chris, he started. Must he must have started with it was David Cronenberg, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the, the Fly, wasn't that? Well, David actually, Cronenberg? I tell you, I remember his first big break. Uh, I was literally living at his home for a year when he asked me uh, out to work with him on a small TV project with a lot of masks. And uh, I was the theatrically trained, and back yes. in the late 70s, theater in New York was absolutely dying because it, yes. couldn't, it couldn't keep up with the, with the budgets that Hollywood was producing, which yes. at that time was way up there, around yes. $2 million. 
So, uh, so Broadway was starting to really wind down. Well, at that time, Chris came back to New Jersey to get married. I had said to him, I'm not doing much. I'm doing some carpentry here and there. Right. And he said, you know, I think I got something coming up. I'll call you. One month to the day, I was on a plane. My God. And I never went back. That is great. Because in that very, very short time, uh, you know, Star Wars had come up, right. had come out, and the special effects industry at that time was just exploding. Was exploding. Yeah, it was just There was off. no keeping it back, and there right. was nowhere to go to learn it. There was nowhere to go to learn. We didn't have the benefit of a Joe Blasco school. We yeah. had nothing. Yeah, that was before. Yeah. yeah. So it was all being done well, in people's garages. I started the Elegant School of Makeup in 1968. I didn't know that. In 1968, uh, the, the, the first, the original right. Elegant School right. of Makeup. I taught there for two, almost three years. And uh, then I left to go work for ABC Television, right. and uh, the secretary um, uh, changed makeup artist. Right. Uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, I can't think of her name. But she took over the school. Gotcha. And and then I, it wasn't until 1974 or 76 actually that I started my school again, okay. right. my own school again. But uh, wh why, uh, why I bring up uh, David Cronenberg is, is that that's where I got my start. Oh. I did. Do you remember the film that came from within? Oh yeah. Well, I did all of that. Oh my it was, God. They came from within and Rabid. Oh, his first another two, great one. His first two films. I actually sent a fellow by the name of Bird Holland up to Canada, to uh, because I was so busy with the school and beginning my cosmetics company that I couldn't go up to Canada. But I designed all of the effects in the armpit yeah. for Marilyn Chambers and the little creature, you oh, know, with the are, hot melt. Those stuff, are great. All this stuff, all the early, early pioneering things, right? And so it's it's funny, you know, you know, you, 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 that we, we kind of all kind of start in that same little area. Like he started, Chris Wallace started with David Cronenberg. I started with David Cronenberg, you know, and and now I'm finding that you then started with Chris Wallace. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like a, it's like we're all connected. There's this giant connection. It's it's a it's a giant wheel made up of small circles, yes. and they're constantly intersecting. You never yes. know where you're going to go. Exactly. I mean, you of all people know you can start in this industry working with a small group of people. You may not see them for ten years. Yes. Yes. Because you'll go off into another circle, right. and then that right. circle will split up, and that will split. Yes. And to me, that's part of the excitement of the industry. Yeah. You're learning constantly because you're you're meeting new people constantly. And then when you meet them again after all these years, those that you haven't met in a while, yep. it's just as though you had never left them. Exactly. Like, for instance, just recently, I, 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 I hadn't spoken to Marie Stein oh in 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I'm going over to the store. I'm going to go over to the store. So we, we went over there, and, you know, the look on his face when he saw me was like, eh. You know, it was like, it was, I love the man. So we, we walked in, you know, we embraced, you know, and it was just, you know, it's like a couple of brothers that hadn't seen themselves in a long time. You have suddenly seen each other in a long time. That's the, yeah. that's the exact spark that I think made the Makeup Artist trade show take off as well as it did. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. it was a once-a-year chance yeah. to catch up with people yes. that you hadn't seen in yes. a while. Yes, I remember at the very first one, my wife and I literally sat in a booth on the floor for several hours yes. with wig makers yes. uh, uh, and other friends, yes. and it, it became obvious that it was a hub of information exchange yes. where we don't pick up the phone and call each other every day. Yes. Yes. So that those circles coming around and closing is incredibly important, and that's what Michael tapped into. That, exactly. And and by the way, we have Michael Key on the show this week. Fabulous. Oh, actually, no, it's last week. So you're going to have to go back into our past seminars to see the Michael Key interview as well as the uh, uh, the Murray Stein interview, which you're not going to want to miss. That's a historic interview. But you're absolutely right, and, and Michael Key really tapped into a – a whole another area of communication that I believe helped pull together the makeup community, mm -hmm. really pull it together. Yep. And I'm hoping that that's what we're going to be able to do with the world makeup community now with MUA. Well, I think this is the next stage. Yeah, you know, this is the this is the next Definitely stage. Definitely next stage. Next stage. Now, uh, aside from everything that you've done, now I'm gonna we're gonna you're gonna come back. We're gonna t we're gonna have Kenny back in the future so that we can talk about his career, where he's from, how he got started in makeup, who his mentors are, you know, his favorite films, you know, his biggest challenges in makeup, and all those wonderful things. But not this time. Not this time. Now it's about premier products. And, and, and Kenny was just, as Scott has just explained to us earlier in the show, um, such a, a, a provider of the knowledge and information, and we have so many of these products here. Of all of these products, 
that you helped to develop, and I'm assuming that you brought these products, the, the green marble sealer, along with you right. uh, when you when you entered uh, into the Premier Products Company. Um, but these others that you've developed along the way, of all of them, which are you the most proud? Joe, that is a tough one, and no, I've never had anybody ask it. Um, but more than likely, I would have to say my firstborn, the original flesh tone palette. The flesh tone palette. Which I had, my wife and I had been making in our studio for about three years before I hooked up with uh, Premier Products. Yes. And uh, had been working on other colors, but hadn't make, made the leap away from the original yet. Yes. Since I was uh, working heavily at the time, so your, your nights and weekends were spent maybe getting an hour in here and an hour in yes. there. So now that you ask that very poignant question, I would say <laughs> that's what I'm here for. My firstborn, the firstborn, yeah. the flesh tone pellet, yeah. and that is this one right here. Right. Let's take a look at this. Now we're gonna we're gonna go in tight on this, so that you can see these colors. And there is rice paper, natural one, natural two, and uh, Lao one. That's in the faces of Dr. Lao. Oh yes. Okay. Good two. catch. And uh, cedar brown. I love these names. Uh, this is vein tone. I love it. And coral adjuster. That's good. An additive to change uh, your, your your base more to a coral orangey tone, and then uh, warm orangey tone. All of the adjuster to take it in the other direction. One to, or coral takes it to the warm end. Uh, olive takes it to, to the cooler end. Then you've got rose adjuster that even I would imagine really brings it to a, a much more warm and you have them all right here now the one the one I really like about this is this palette is designed for professional makeup artists because if you really look at these there's you know one or two that are actual skin tones or maybe three four or most of these on the top level here could be these are your skin tones from light to dark mm -hmm. and varying tones of warmth and and uh, uh, all of already uh, but what you've got down here you see you've got to be a makeup artist you've got to understand color to understand when and where to use these adjusters I used to call them c uh, color correction additives these uh, I like the word adjuster better and you, you, you're able to, you know, you, you know that by adding the green to any one of these, you're going you're to create more of an olive undertone. By adding the, the rose, or, uh, you know, you're going to create more of a, a, a ruddy uh, um, undertone. So you, you have, you have uh, all of this at your, in your finger, at your fingertips where you can be creative. You know, it's not just use this or that or this or that but you can you can choose from any of these flesh tone colors but you also have the ability to be an artist and that's what premier products is all about and that's why they have makeup artists such as yourself who can come in and understand the needs of the makeup artist and to design something that will work as this does right. so congratulations thank you very much your firstborn fantastic now I, now I have to say this again. And this is my favorite one, and I guess it's just I'm from the like the the '80s when we used to use a lot of glitter and, and gl <laughs> a lot of gl glitter and glam here. The Alchemy palette, all right. The Alchemy palette of uh, all kinds of body painting, all sorts of wonderful, wonderful uh, for highlation, you know, and and uh, body painting effects, facial painting effects. I use these for avant-garde eye makeups, and I'm going to be using these. Um, in, in, during a, a very, very detailed series of seminars that I'm mm. doing, uh, starting, uh, we're going to start taping in, in uh, December. This is the Necromania. Necromania. And this is interesting. Tell us about this. Well, um, um, as you said, this is our first time actually getting a chance to sit down and uh, why it's a special for me is uh, I have a thank you that uh, it goes out to this palette, which I've never been able to sit down or had time to do. Um, every one of the what I call the basic palettes or specialty palettes, the core group from which other people make their specialty palettes, came because of a show, something that was needed. Yes. And for years I've carried in my kit a stack of Joe Blasco's Death Colors. <laughs> I still carry it to this day because I never know when I'm going to need it. Right, right. And I looked at that stack every day for years and said, you know, 
I want this in a tattoo base too. Yes. I want it in both. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in layering. Yes. There is no one makeup that is the be all and end all. Absolutely. Period. That's one of the things I love about your school and why you've yes. invited us all here because yes. you're exposing your students to other materials. Yeah, well, it's not, this isn't just for my school. This, well, is, this is for all makeup schools. There are, okay. you, you have no idea how many people, we're getting letters, emails from teachers in makeup schools in Austria, in okay. Germany, mm -hmm. in Finland. I mean, from all over the world, from Australia. And, 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 and it's, MUA TV has really, um, it's, it's more or less kind of leveled the playing field. And, and it's, it's enabling now us to not only just teach this information to my students, right. but also to offer it to other makeup schools and to, to, to those around the world who aren't able to afford to go to a makeup school. Right. You see? Right. And that's why it's so important for them to know about these products. But so, so the necromania has come from, originated from my death Your colors. Your death colors. Well, thank you for that. You, no, thank you for that. That is very flattering. I, I, I appreciate I, that. The, the Joe Blasco line, when I started in the industry, was a bit renegade because up till then, oh, yeah. most of the, of the major suppliers were still stuck in the 60s. And yeah. the cameras were, and the technology was increasing faster than the technology that was going up people's faces. Yes, yes. Well, your line was the only one that was addressing that properly. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I, I as a, a, a many artists, were kind of looking at you as you're building stuff going, well, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's funny. And then going back going, how come you guys ain't doing that? Uh, Luckily for us, you were there. And that was one of the early influences yeah. uh, and one that always stuck in the back of my head. I said, well, I have an homage to Joe to pay. Thank you. And a thank you to you. Oh, you're very welcome. And I, I, I appreciate your not only telling me this, but also sharing it with our audience as well. Because there's a lot of, uh, you know, I've discontinued a lot of my my original theatrical mm -hmm. products. We still carry the death colors. We still have the creative colors. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, because we originally had started with an airbrush. We developed an airbrush. We mm -hmm. developed a, a kind of a, a stay color, so to speak, right. Right. you know, yeah. originally. But there are so many that have come out that have far exceeded the quality and the color range of my original yeah. concepts yeah. that there's no point for me to even continue manufacturing them because I would rather help promote the other lines, mm -hmm. you see, than, than to, to just completely have this huge line of product, which we had for the longest period of time. Yeah. And, it, and, and I'm so flattered that others have recognized the value of the original products that I made back then to, oh, yeah. to, to be able to improve upon them as Premier Products has done. And, uh, is obviously continuing to do, but thank you for that. This You're very, very, welcome. very kind. Very welcome. To, to, to close one of the circles we started, when I, uh, when Richard and I were using some of the uh, products that he had gleaned from first talking to uh, Scott and Eric, yes, uh, one of them was Super Self, yes. which you spoke about, and at that time Amazing. it was taking us an hour to get aliens out of makeup so that we didn't hurt them. Yes, you know, you know how some of these glues will will grab. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, tell me about it. Yeah. And uh, we uh, got our bottle of Super Solve, and it changed our world. It really rocked it, because all of a sudden we could cut our cleanup times in half. In half, yeah. Uh, that's it, what kind of made my eyes go open and go, I want to meet these guys too. Yeah, you know, there is something that a lot of makeup artists and all of you out there worldwide, you have to understand that you've got to put as much time and trouble and care and thought into the removal of an appliance as you do into the application of an appliance. Yeah, you, you betcha. Know. There's nothing like at the end of the day, the producers are going, get them out, get yeah. them out, yeah. get them out. You're going, take it easy. Right. Let's not hurt them so they can come back tomorrow. Right, exactly. And Super Solve Plus, this saved my butt, and I explained it earlier, and if you missed the earlier part of the show, you're going to want to tune in and because the show repeats itself, as you know, and uh, you'll catch the first part of the show. Uh, this helped me uh, uh, get to the hospital quickly. <laughs> And to get out of the hospital quickly. So you, uh, th this Super Solve is an amazing product, and it takes anything off, as I said. And so now, uh, let's go through, let's go through all of the palettes, sure. if, if we may. And I'm going to just take them one at a time, right here. And again, I've said before, and I'll say again. Now I've never seen these palettes before. I have no idea what you're going to show me. <laughs> okay, custom color flesh tone. 
This is the custom color flesh top. Yes, this is the child-proof opening This version. is child-proof. You know, I, I, I don't know what it is, whether I'm getting old or, or whether packaging is getting child-proof or makeup. Old makeup artist proof. Uh, Throw them from, against from, the wall from, to open them. From, from time to time, <laughs> I'll go through, just, you know, randomly, go through our stacks of colors, and I like to glue some of them closed. Just for how fun. Did you, how did you do that? Actually, Show me how you do this. There's, a, there's this neat little thing right here. There's one on one side of the, I at the bottom, one on the top, and you just say, please. Ah, there we go. And off she goes. This particular palette was actually a custom collection uh, done for a, a, a New York artist in a school. Um, um, uh, way back, uh, oh goodness, early 2000s, I believe. Let me if show I'm not it. too wrong. 2005. Yeah, 2005. For New York. See? For New York. It's Is it easy. a school? It's easy to open when you when you, when you know how. how. <laughs> you just have to play with it for a little while. We're having the same trouble with some of our new containers as well. Uh, and this right here, this is the, uh, it says uh, Rob Benvendez. Is that right? Is that how you pronounce yeah. his name? Bienvenidas. 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 Oh, Bienvenidas. There you go. And, uh, and this is a color system for the professional makeup artist, custom collection flesh tone. And there are a lot of really wonderful flesh tones here as well. Some of the same ones from the other palette, I noticed. What's nice is that we've got a, an array of tones now that people can come through and say, you know, I'd like this. For my, for my show, my yeah. situation, I'd like this, 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 and this, 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 and this. And may I have them laid out this way because that's how my brain thinks. Yes, yes. Well, this is, this is excellent. And, and you said earlier that you, you designed a palette specifically for the Neil actually for Pirates. Th actually three. Uh, one for each of the pirate movies. And uh, there was a pirate school that she was That's she was correct. giving it That's everyone. Correct. And uh, see, now I can. That's do our it. complexion palette. Now I can do it. Very good. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, complexion palette. And again, I have to say, the design, the pictures, they're they're phenomenal. We spend a yeah. lot of time on the on the labels. Great colors, just absolutely phenomenal colors. And uh, you know, they, these just go on and on. Here's a here's an interesting one. This, this, uh, this one here is uh, Acmuse. Acmuse is the Australian College of Makeup and Special Effects. Excellent, excellent. Uh, another school that asked us to put together a kit for them. Well, I think we're going to have to talk. Hmm. I think we're going to have to talk. Because we might, I know definitely. That John Adams. Here. This is John Adams. Obviously, this is for the, mm -hmm. the show, John Adams. See these colors. And now, did you work the show? I did not. I was on something else at the time. I, I think Matthew Mungo, I think, worked. worked. Uh, yes, I think he Matthew did do some work for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, beautiful, as I recall. Yeah. This is Dave Anderson's zombie palette. Excellent. That rice paper seems to appear on a lot of these. Rice paper is a favorite and appears in almost every palette we yeah. make. It's a great light, all of the undertoned flesh tone. Right that uh, would, could be used as kind of a, uh, like a TV white tone to, yes, to, right. to lighten yep. everything. Yes, yes, exactly right. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. And we have another one right here. Again, it's like Christmas for me. Let's see if I can do this one. This is, aha, I'm getting it down. Here we go. This is one of the Pirate Palace, Pirate 3. This is Pirate 3. At World's End. Aren't those great? Those are great colors. These are deep colors. All of, uh, all of the pirates were uh, heavily uh, textured for exposure. Yes. And uh, they were, it was a beautiful process to watch. I was uh, lucky enough to be part of Pirates 3. Uh, I had been asked on all of them at one time or another, and that was one I was actually available to go and play on, and I had a wonderful time. Now, let me ask you this. Pirate School. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the, this was a big part mm -hmm. of Pirate School. Right. What was the technique that was used, and I know that everybody out, that's out there, I mean, they've seen the pirates, right. and they see this crusty, beautifully, wonderfully textured skin, and uh, in what way did this product make that happen? It was actually a variety technique based off the comfort level of each individual artist. V will, in the school, would show how she would do it, or how uh, Ken Diaz would do it. He, he ran the background tent, and wonderfully. But ultimately, uh, uh, orange sponge was used, white sponge torn was used, uh, dome brushes were used in a yes. stipple technique, yes. uh, or, and spattering. 
Yes. A, a simple toothbrush, yes, dip, just, and spatter. Yeah. It, so each person would cater it to their needs and their comfort level, yes. and as well as the look on the particular actor yes, as well. Yes, yes. Now, now, were you in charge of a, a unit? On I was parts? in charge of nothing. <laughs> I was actually uh, brought in to do a particular uh, uh, person. He was called Gentleman Jocard. Uh, a beautiful uh, uh, African American uh, British actor that was brought in, and he had to have tribal scars yes. down his face, and uh, and then all of those particular pirates, I think, were part of our New World pirates. So they had a very specific yes. look. He had extended earlobes with uh, yes. earrings and baubles yes. in that, and uh, he had uh, braided uh, uh, hair in in his beard, yes. uh, somewhat like Johnny and some of the other yes. extensions. And so he was uh, a joy to work with. I also uh, uh, double teamed with Joe on the last stage of Bootstrap Bill with the uh, uh, star fish on yeah, his face yes. and uh it was about a four and a half five hour makeup yeah. and had a couldn't have had a better time and all the all the while using premier products yep yeah excellent okay now now let's you, you're you're at premier give me an idea of the kind of association that you have on a daily basis with the with the people at the premier products company how do you uh, is this a full-time job is this is something you go in on a daily a daily and every other day basis or you you get an idea and you call them or you're working on do you work at home on a lot of these in your own laboratory on a lot of these projects and yeah. then you bring the you bring your formulas to them and then they and you say this and then they, they tweak it and you work with them give me an idea of how your relationship as a consultant to or as a partner with right. Premier Products, how does that work? Um, um, the, the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Skin Illustrator as a product is owned by Cine Makeup Inc. That's me. Uh, we are a separate company from Premier Products, but we are, are partnered in its manufacture and distribution. I see. So, uh, the work that happens on the palettes, the colors, happen more nine times out of ten in the field while we're working. Yes. Many times you're working and you're trying to create a color, or someone will walk up to me in a trailer and go, do you have something like that? And if I can't get them to it, I'll make a note of it. Right, right. Because obviously there's a color there that I, that it doesn't exist somewhere in the yes. system. Yeah. Now, I try not to do a color dead for dead because people would be, I'd have a collection of individual colors that did one job. Yes. So uh, if I can't mix it within two or three, yes. that's when I'll consider looking at it as an individual color. Um, that's one way they come about. Other ways they've come about is just from my life experience, like the Necromania palette yes. and using your cosmetics and going yes. Yes. after a number of years, I want that in a tattoo color. Yes. To work in conjunction or alone yes. or in any combination yes. with Joe Blasco Cosmetics or yes. any other cosmetic line. Yes, yes. yes. Because, as you know, the best makeups are not done with one thing. They're usually a conglomerate. Absolutely. Um, and that's what we teach in and, and the makeup schools. And, and we're using all form of makeup. So we're all, all brands of makeup. It's beautiful. not just Joe Blasco products. Right. You know, because I've, and, and I've seen that, you, and I admire you, it a yeah, great deal. Yeah, thank you. Because you're probably the only one doing it. Other than, perhaps, uh, Marvin Westmore School. Yes. Uh, in town here. Yes. And, and and just to get on a soapbox for just a moment, those that aren't are doing their students a horrendous disservice. Because I've had a graduate of one of these schools, not to be named, yes. say to myself and friends of mine, well, where do you buy lipsticks? Kind of my same reaction, Joe. Where do you buy lipsticks? Where do you lipstick? buy a lipstick? Hmm. Oh my God! Well, well there's, a, there's a store behind an alley. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I, and I digress. Let's not go so there. Let, 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 let me Wait, get well, back. That, that's the subject of an entirely different show. Correct. Okay. Um, so once uh, I have an idea, um, I will start to uh, think of it in terms of color palette. Yes. Uh, sometimes I've thought of it in terms of a general idea, and created the label first. Yeah. Because through that, the creative juices start to move, and you start going. Yes. That's what I couldn't put yes. a word to, but I understand where yes. I'm going now. Yes. And then I'll start to mix the colors myself. I actually mix all color master batches myself from this standpoint. Again, not to get on a soapbox, but over the years I've called various companies and said, you know, there's this color you have, and I have another one of it, and they're not match. even close. Yes. And usually the answer is, well, we follow the recipe. Well, I'm sorry, but 
of the kind of faces that I work on don't want to hear that you can't match the color. Yes, exactly. Get it on my face and get me out the That's door. Right. So as far as I'm concerned, the manufacturer's job is to be going through the angst of making that color come as close as possible, if not improve it. Absolutely. Try to, to hit it right help on me. the head. Help me. Yes. Help me get these actors out. Help me get them out of the chair because they don't want to be there. And part of that is making certain that the colors match from batch to batch. Correct. So I spend a great deal of time, even colors that are created and formulated to the ten thousandths of a gram. Yes, yes. Okay? And you know this yourself. Yes, yes. Doesn't mean that the next batch of pigment you get in is will be match the same. it. Absolutely. It's going to be the same. So it has to be adjusted. So it has to be adjusted. And this is where experience in chemistry and, and experience in compounding Correct. comes in. Becomes, I have the same lady working in my laboratory that has been with me for 19 years. Oh, nice. And every time we get pigment in mm -hmm. from one of these pig, pigment companies, yeah. whether it be liquid or powder or whatever, mm -hmm. it's always different. Yep. It's never, oh, not always, but right. sometimes yeah. it's different. And she'll mix it up or the speed of the mixer might have been different or the temperature of the batch may have been yep. different or the milling may have been different yep. and it's going to be it's not going to match right. so these people who've been with me so long know mm -hmm. okay if it's this way then i have to add a little bit more of this a little bit more of that so yep. you know it's 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 always experimenting yep. and this is what a professional makeup company will do for you now Cosmetic companies in general that are across the board that sell makeup to the society right. to, through department stores really have no concern about whether it matches from batch to batch. None at all. Because firstly, the amount of pigment that's in any of the liquid makeups, you could put any, any number of any shade from 1 to 10 right. on almost any skin and it's going to disappear because right. there's no pigmentation percentage of pigment. But when you're working in the professional motion picture and television industry, it's got to be the same all the time. Right. And that's why having someone like you with Premier Products, overseeing it, inventing it, checking it out, making the batches yourself right. is so important. This is what I do. My nose is always, I'm always looking in batches. Well, not so much anymore because I've got people now that have been doing it so long, like I said, right. that they look in and but they know like, how you think. They know how I think, exactly. And that's the important part. It's, yeah. it's interesting. Early on uh, in, in uh, Skin Illustrator, people would say, well, why, why did you make Skin Illustrator? And I said, N well, not to knock anybody. There were two other companies out there. They're both fine companies. Yeah, they're excellent companies. They're fine people. <laughs> but I wanted something different, and no one was willing to go there. Mm -hmm. I wanted something different because it was my behind with my back to camera, fixing a face or trying to fix something quickly. And it was my behind getting talked to by the AD of, can you get out of there? Can you get out of there? And if I had to mix something from scratch... That was the wrong place to be doing it. Yes. I needed something closer. Yes. So that you can get there faster. Yes. Before the director goes. Fast. That's the, that's the key. Fast. 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 Speed. Yep. You know, and I found that that's so important. This is what we try to teach our people, our makeup people, our students. You know, you can take all day long and do a wonderful makeup. But why? Exactly. Work quickly. Right. Do a wonderful makeup. Let your tools do the job for you. Yep. And they can't do a good job unless the tools are high quality. Well said. Sam? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to break right now just Perfect. for a second. We're going to be right back, right back with Kenny Myers right after these words. Don't go away. <laughs> 